Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Convenience and service. These are two key words that you might keep in mind as a Shopify merchant when it becomes um, a, a part of your business to get people back to your business and maybe get them into a subscription um, program because that's where really the money is. So that's also what we want to talk about today. Subscription programs, how brands can launch, scale and being innovative with them. For that, I have Matthew Holman on the show today. He's the head of growth at QPilot at QPilot.cloud. Matthew's perspective reaches across the spectrum from marketing to operations to shipping. He worked directly with hundreds of brands to transform their acquisition, shipping, and subscriptions. And he understands the balance that must be struck when developing a successful business and making choices about how resources should be allocated. At his core, Matt is a problem solver. So he's the right person to talk about subscription programs. Hi, Matt. How are you today? I'm doing well, Klaus. Thanks for having me on. Sure, you're welcome. Matt, tell me a little bit, what are the biggest issues when it comes to start a subscription program in your business? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's a couple of things that I see a lot of brands doing from a mistake standpoint. Um, the first is um, often making things more complicated than they need to be. Um, you know, there's a lot of really big players out there in the world. Where we're talking Netflix or Dollar Shave Club. Um, you know, th these types of brands that are just crushing it in the subscription space. And so we often as uh, brands want to emulate what we're seeing from a success standpoint, other other companies doing. So that's the first thing is, is understanding that you, you can't just run before you can walk, right? So you want to put some basic things in place. And so the other side of that is making sure you're putting in kind of a good experience, a basic experience. There's a lot of great Shopify apps that can make that happen. Um, but you're doing data collection. That's the other big thing. You're collecting reasons why people cancel. You're collecting reasons why people subscribe in the first place. You're talking to customers about what they like or they don't like. Um, those are the two big things, the big mistake and kind of the, the best way to get started. Okay. Now, not every business is suitable for a subscription program, but a lot of them are, and maybe they're not, not aware of that they might be able to start a subscription program. Give me a bit of an idea of what kind of verticals or industries, niches, um, are suitable to run a program? Sure. Yeah, I think there's some pretty obvious ones that are a good fit, right? We're talking about supplements, um, cosmetics, uh, consumables like uh, pet food, um, CBDs is growing really strongly um, right now. Um, so those are like kind of your obvious ones. I think there's also a lot of ones related to um, replenishment. So like even if you're selling, you know, like an air filter, system and you want to put the filters on an auto ship or a repeat delivery program um, can make a lot of sense. I've even seen subscriptions for pillowcases because people don't switch out their sheets enough, right? So you can do an annual subscription to get new sheets every year. Um, that's that's another one. I think um, the, the other thing that people should be thinking about, even if you're not necessarily a great or if you don't think you're a great fit or you're unsure about it, I would still look at membership options. So if you're still thinking about like, how you can engage with people, um, you know, brands that are offering, say, like free shipping on for any member, right, or access to exclusive content or other features that you can offer in your business. Memberships give you a, a similar like subscription revenue option that you can do, and it gives you greater engagement with your customers. And anybody right. can do that. Where are the main differences between a membership and a subscription based program? Yeah. So, I, I mean, for me, I think about the difference of what I'm talking about is most subscriptions I'm talking about are going to be something that's a physical good that's getting shipped. And a membership is going to be an access to perks or benefits or content. So it's almost like a paywall you're putting, like you could think of, I would call Netflix a membership, right? Or Amazon Prime as a membership. Um, if I'm subscribing to, um, you know, a supplement company, I don't actually, I'm sorry, if I'm a, a member of a supplement company, I might not be putting products on a subscription, but I might be getting access to special discounts because I have the membership. I might be getting free shipping because I have a membership, that kind of thing. So that's the difference between the two. Okay. Now, I uh, said convenience and service is one of the main reasons why people sign up for a subscription-based right. delivery. Let's talk about frequency types. What kind of frequency times are, uh, types are most common when it comes to subscriptions? Yeah, the most common is going to be every month. Um, and what's interesting is a couple, just a couple of years ago, it was actually kind of hard to create custom frequencies uh, around like getting shipments. And most subscriptions were kind of like a, 
you get it when you get it kind of mentality. Um, and so now that's changing. So a lot of the apps on, on Shopify now are making it really, really simple to like, you can set it so that it's every third Thursday of the month, every other week, it could be whatever frequency your customers want. And so that's the whole idea with convenience is you want to make it so that it's really simple for customers to choose what works for them. Um, but, you know, again, the monthly basis is really common. I would say, you know, two to three weeks and then quarterly is probably the next most common frequency. And that's for people that are selling like maybe a bigger item instead of getting like one can, say you have a subscription, this candle subscription, instead of getting one candle every month, because the shipping for that is, is maybe a little prohibitive, you do three candles every quarter. That way you can lump three products in, the shipping is not quite the same, right, for spending three candles all at once versus three candles individually, so there's better margins there. Um, so you can kind of play with that frequency depending on what works best for your customers and for um, your business operations. Okay, let's talk a little bit about communication and flows within a subscription. I think um, keeping the customer in the loop is, is quite important there, but also as a merchant, you need to keep in the, in the loop. Um, for these both scenarios, what's what's kind of the information workflow that a app like QPilot uh, provides? Yeah, so the first thing is you want to be able to send regular notifications around orders that when they're about to process to let people know. Um, I know that there are some brands that like turning those off because... Um, you're almost like prompting someone to cancel. So it's easier to drive better retention numbers by turning that off. Yeah, <laughs> you had the same response I do. Um, you know, it, depending on where you are though, this is illegal. So be careful. Um, you, know, it, you know, in the US, uh, California has passed laws that are very prohibitive of this type of thing. If you're a small business, maybe they won't come after you, but I, I would recommend against doing that. I think it's just about being more creative. So. Um, you know, you first want to make sure you're having a good process related to check-ins. So instead of just letting somebody know, hey, your order is about to process, do you want to cancel? <laughs> how many people are going to say yes to that? It's, it's hey, your order is about to, pro how are things going? Your next order is about to process. And it's a quick check-in. Like, how, how's it going? How much do you have? And if somebody says they have too much, you can always ask them, hey, well, do you want to uh, postpone or skip an order, right? Like, or if you want to change your order in any way, you log in here. So that way it's, it's you're at least communicating with them, you're engaging with them, but you're also not suggesting that they cancel. So that's kind of the first thing. I think that um, it's really important to onboard people to subscriptions. So if they subscribe to a product, they're getting put into their own kind of like Klaviyo flow related to subscriptions so that they understand like, expectations around the product, what they're going to get, how they manage it within the account portal. I know a lot of this seems really obvious, but um, a lot of people maybe are new to it or they're new to your website. Um, so you want to make sure you're always over communicating and, and over educating people on how they can manage stuff. Um, so those are kind of the biggest things. And then if you're getting, I mean, for me, I really like the idea of like more exclusive content for subscribers. So if you can invest in, um, you know, specific email flows for them each month, special offers for subscribers, those are your best customers. And um, that's who I would be marketing to first. Okay. So you're basically saying not only sell them what they have subscribed to, but also throw in other products. Is that right? Absolutely. hundred percent. Okay. Now from the merchant side, obviously you have to manage all these subscriptions and a lot of merchants might try as a, as a test with subscriptions. So they don't have a subscription based model um, in their normal business um, setup. What do they need to look for when it comes to scaling a subscription based program in the back end? Yeah, the back end is interesting. It's Shopify is making it pretty easy in the way the app works so that it's easy to take orders and manage orders because you're going to see orders in your uh, that are going to hit your um, fulfillment window, basically, like a, like a normal order would. So it's going to go through your normal fulfillment process. The tricky part um, is making sure that you're doing correct inventory planning related to subscription orders. So like, you know, if you have a thousand subscribers um, and you know that in that a thousand subscriber growth, maybe it's growing 10% a month. So over the next six months, do I have 6,600 products or whatever to fulfill all those orders? And, or, and, and, and if not, I need to reserve that product and maybe turn off the one-time option on the site so that the subscribers keep their products. That's the biggest um, backend issue that I see. Um, the rest is related to just setting up specific segmenting and flows within Klaviyo um, for, for um, anything like specific around messaging and onboarding you want to do. 
Uh, most apps like like ours is going to um, manage the notification part around the order coming up and the order processing stuff. Um, and then the rest of the, again, the way it's sinking in is you're going to still get, take advantage of like the tracking emails and everything else is going to work the way it would normally work because of your fulfillment process. So that from a back end, that's the biggest thing is like product planning and making sure you have inventory available. Um, for the other part of scale, which is like, how do I figure out how to grow this? Um, you know, from the initial question around the initial, what you should be doing related to data collection, you want to start marrying this information you're getting around churn and acquisition stuff. And so I have a quick little anecdote related to this. So one of our customers is um, iHeartDogs and they sell pet food and they do a portion of all their sales go to feeding shelter pets. So it's a great mission. It's a great brand. They were running subscriptions for about two years, kind of on autopilot while they were focusing on other parts of the business, which is natural with e-commerce. We're constantly bouncing to whatever fire we need to put out, right? So they ran that, but they were collecting data. So one of the things that they were uncovering with data related to cancellations is that they had customers were canceling because they had too much product, which um, as you can imagine is actually the most common reason people cancel subscriptions like across the board. It's, it's people end up with too much, they cancel. But what's important to get at is like, why? Why do people have too much product? And as they started to dig, they, dig deeper, they found out the reason people had too much product is because dogs come in very different sizes, they weren't sure about how much product to order, right? So scale at this point isn't about a better discount or better copy necessarily. It's not about like giving gifts, which is a common subscription tactic to try to get people to stick around longer. They love the product. They just had too much. So scale at this point is taking that churn reason. People have too much product because they don't know what to buy. And they went back and they redesigned their product page. So now their product page, if you go to it, iheartdogs.com, is you select the estimated size of your dog, small, medium, large. And based on what you pick, it options to an amount on a preset frequency. And so now that way, people are told how much they should buy and on what frequency. And I can tell you what happened was is their conversions like went up 40% on the initial page. So they started converting higher and retention increased as well. And so this is something I call like the subscription flywheel is you start to understand why people are canceling. And if you can go back to the beginning of the process and make that simpler or easier to understand, maybe you need to change the frequency or change how people understand how your product works. That's, that's how you unlock scale and start to really, really grow. That's an awesome example of how to do it right. And I think that's what a lot of merchants should do, um, really get a better feeling about their their client or in that right. case about whoever, the dog, whoever gets it, right. <laughs> the product exactly. at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I think it's an, it's an awesome um, idea of really um, get a bigger picture of what's happening on the other side, but not as I said, not only throwing in discounts or anything to, to keep people longer on board. Now, from right. your experience, what is a negative or what is a churn rate that basically backfires on you? What kind of percentage should you avoid on churn rate? Because there is no way that you completely can avoid the churns. Yeah, I'd say like, it, it depends on the month. So like month one to month two is the most common biggest drop-off point. If you're at 10 or 15%, that's that's decent. If, if you're at 25, 30%, um, there's some work to be done still. Um, and if you're at 50% churn, that's really, really bad. Um, so if you think about, if you're doing like 10% churn, you're gonna turn over everybody um, basically every 10 months, right? So um, that, and that's, that's that, again, that's, de that's pretty decent. Um, so, I would say though, the problem with the comparison is you don't want to get too far into the comparison of like, oh, I'm at 7%, I need to be at six kind of thing. Um, but I would always say if you're, if you're, um, if you're in the 10 to 20% range from month one to month two, month two to month three, um, you just maybe need to improve some of the offer related to like what people are expecting and getting. It's like maybe the unboxing experience needs to be a little bit better. If you're higher than that, then you have an acquisition problem. It's not a churn problem. It's a people are getting something they don't expect or they're not getting something they expect. And so you have a problem with the type of customer you're bringing in. Um, that's that's a really common. Um, another quick story of that is like a, a um, gentleman's box. A friend of mine was running that and they were doing a monthly box of like just curated goods. 
and they were finding out that they're they had they were okay on churn, but they're finding out the top reasons for churn were people would get a little bit of product fatigue. They were getting so many products every month they couldn't use them all. And then um, the expense was one thing. Um, and so what they did was they shifted gears instead of doing a monthly box, they started doing a quarterly box. And they so they started kind of charging for three boxes in one. What's interesting is they raised their prices, but their conversions actually went up because they started going at they were finding a customer that could afford to buy three boxes all at once. And so it changed kind of like their business. So it, again, if you have really high churn numbers, it's often an acquisition issue. It's not a, a subscription retention issue, if that makes sense. No, it sounds good. Now, your app, QPilot, um, solves this problem of how to deal with all of that. Give me a bit of an overview yeah. of, about the app itself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, QPilot, we we prize flexibility above any everything else. We think that the, and, and we have data to support this, that the best customers are going to stick around the longest and that your best customers have slightly different needs than others, whether they're going on vacation and they want to change what they're getting, they want to pause, they need a different frequency, um, whether they want to add products or take out products. So we think that QPilot is built to be as flexible as possible for the end user while making sure that your backend operations are not thrown into um, you know chaos, right? So um, it works really, really seamlessly with how you would normally fulfill orders. And that way you can drive better retention, better customer experiences for your end users um, and keep them keep them around longer. Okay. Cupilot is a Shopify app. Give me a bit of an idea about the pricing structure. Yeah, so we charge, um, we're a little bit different. We, um, we're, we're releasing on Shopify right now, actually. We've been on WooCommerce, we started on WooCommerce first. Um, but uh, most subscription apps charge a percentage of sale. Um, we we're not fans of that model. So we charge kind of more like a typical usage model. So there's a SaaS fee depending on your size, whether that's like 50 bucks a month, 150 bucks a month kind of thing. And then we charge just a flat fee for the number of subscriptions that are on our platform at a given time. Okay. Are there any kind of homework that um, the merchant needs to do before they um, start working with you? Um, yeah, I think it comes down to there's a lot of different apps. So you should definitely do some due diligence related to what fits best for your um, your business. Um, we again, we do really, really well with um, subscriptions that need to change. So if you have a really static flat box that goes out every month and there's nothing too fancy about it, we might actually be overkill for you. Um, so I think you really want to evaluate software based on what your core business needs are so you can do a, a, a pretty apt comparison. So that's what I would say is homework. And that's the technologist in me saying you should make sure you evaluate software the right way. Okay. Uh, how does the onboarding process work? Uh, it's pretty quick. It's a couple of clicks to kind of set up and install um, and then turn on what products you want to make available. Um, there's some customizations you can do related to emails and processing. Um, so it's something you can plug in and just poke around with. Um, but I would always suggest, depending on, like, again, if you want to make sure it does X, Y, Z, or want to make sure it works the way you expect, you can always do a demo or a call with us too. Okay, sounds great. Where can people find out more about you guys? Yeah, I definitely, you could go to qpilot.com um, or qpilot.cloud. Um, we're migrating websites right now as well. Um, but I would love to also, I do a lot of subscription, just chat, consulting and content too. So if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, Matthew Holman, qpilot, um, would love to talk more about subscriptions with you. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt, for this overview about subscription programs. I uh, specifically like the um, examples that you gave on how people really solve a problem and revisit if there is a problem. So great content there. Thanks so much for your time. Okay. Thank you, Klaus. Hey, Klaus here. Before you go, I would like to invite you to become part of the e-commerce merchant pro community to get actionable advice from other Shopify merchants who already have achieved what you are aiming for. Our community is a safe place to actively grow your online retail business with the support of the most amazing and helpful group of e-commerce entrepreneurs behind you. Running a Shopify business is tough. Don't do it alone. Join us now. You will find the link in the show notes. Also, if you think your online store has conversion or marketing issues and you would like to have a fresh set of eyes on your business, then drop me an email at klaus at klauslauter.com and let me know a little bit about your business. It might be beneficial for you to have me look over your store, offers, emails, and ads, and get an unbiased outside perspective and guidance to help you mo make most of your online business. Thank you, as always, for tuning in today. I appreciate you. Until next time, and I talk to you soon.